fight fans, and they came out in, in, in force tonight. So that was a lot of fun. I have to say, we were, out, we were off for a few weeks, and uh, to come back uh, in this fashion was good. It was good to be back, good to be fighting again. Uh, we took a few weeks off over, you know, uh, beginning of August here. And we've got a big rest of the year. We've got a lot of fights coming. Um, I feel like November, obviously, is, is shaping up to be an absolutely huge, huge fight. So um, it's going to be a great, uh, you know, great to end to this year, and I'm uh, looking forward to. It. We've had, you know, great fights tonight. We've got great fights coming up again. But I just want to say thanks to all the fighters, amazing fights, some, some new talent really showing off uh, their skills tonight, and uh, and to our production teams who are uh, going to be spending the night. We're going to do it again tomorrow for PBC. Of course, you're all welcome to come back. We have a great fight tomorrow, and uh, hoping uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. So. So thank you, Mr. Coker, for a great night. Thanks, John. You know, at this point, why don't we just open it up uh, to the fighters for any questions from the media? Question over here. Uh, first question from Ben said, um, you were visibly upset. I, I actually heard you yell out who, who played that song, who played that song. What, can you talk about that a little bit? Um, you know, as fighters, we're, we're pretty emotional individuals, and especially right at that time, right in that moment, we're pretty emotional, we're pretty worked up, so I think I might have a slight little bit of an overreaction. I apologize for acting like a child in there. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was upset that they uh, kind of misplayed my, my walkout song. I think my walkout song is a pretty uh, decent staple. People know what my walkout song is, and they got it wrong, so I was well, did upset, it, upset a little bit more than I probably should have been. But that, did that play into your psyche as you started the fight? Because I, I know... There were some blue birds. One, one, once, once the fight starts, the fight starts. It, there, I, you can't make any excuse. Oh, well, he dyed his hair yellow, and I wasn't expecting it. Oh, he you know, did this or that. Oh, my Laurent walkout song or this or that, yada, yada, yada. No excuses. Once the fight starts, the fight starts, and uh, my performance was was what it was. Now, in the freak injury that happened, you said in your post fight interview that it was due to you checking the kicks. Yep. Was that, do we know, is that what it was from, or, or was it how he stepped? No, it was pretty confirmed. It's from the check kicks. After the whole Anderson Silva thing, you know, people uh, started working on whole, the whole check and kicks things. Our gym copied like everybody else does, and we started practicing checking kicks, and not just like checking, but doing a knee check, leaning into it a little bit. And uh, I would have never guessed, I would have never put any money on me winning the fight from checking the kick, but, you know, if Chris Wyman takes a W, that way, I'll take it up that way too. And lastly, what um, were you a little bit drawn out from from the weight cut down to 55? And what was your game plan going into the fight? I don't think the, the weight cut had a too much of a negative effect. Obviously, the weight cut has has an effect on your performance period. But I wouldn't say it was too much of a, a negative effect. And, and going into the fight, the game plan was to go beat him up, and I got my hand raised. Uh, question for AJ. Um, you look pretty impressive out there, explosive. You, you're under the spotlight, spotlight a little bit because of your dad. Um, does that is that added pressure because of that? And you're kind of fighting close by. Uh, for me, no, man. Um, when I'm in there, there's no pressure. You know, I'm in there having fun, doing doing what I'm supposed to do, and that's that's put on a show for the people. So, uh, as far as my dad, you know, um, it just pushes me to train harder. You know. Just having that last name McKee, everyone definitely thinks I'm gonna go out there and wrestle. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm gonna be in there letting my hands do the talking for me, you know. So uh, I just love to put on a great show for the people. Uh, question in the back over here, AJ uh, Derek Buff from my latest here. When you had the arm triangle on the ground, how close was it to being stopped? Do you think? Um, honestly, I was sitting there with it, and I was like, my arms are burning a little bit. I don't know if I want to put too much energy into it. So um, I didn't feel it quite under the neck. That's kind of a hard choke to finish. So I just kind of passed it by and started looking for other options, you know. Just didn't want to spend too much time, too much energy on it. Right. How, how close do you think you are to that title shot? Whoever, whenever, man, sign that dotted line. Um, hopefully, I want it in two fights. You know, I want to be the youngest champ ever. 21, John Jones has got it in 23. So uh, ASAP, I'd say ASAP. I'm putting in the work, and I'm not going to stop grinding. I'll be in the gym Monday, so the grind's still going. And now you're you're young. You're 21 years old. 
Now, when fighters get older, they tend to put on more mass. How, how long do you see yourself at 145? Do you think you can stay there at 5 foot 10? Um, that frame? Right now, the, yes. So that's that's why I'm trying to get that belt as soon as possible. You know, I feel at 55s, I will be a lot bigger, a lot stronger, and a lot more explosive. So um, only time can tell, man. I, I got to just keep taking it one fight at a time and, and keep making a name for myself. So I'm going to keep doing what I have to do. Great. Uh, Shinzo, next question. Um, that uppercut that you landed, um, the, when you had him on the ground before and you were throwing the strikes in the first shot that you hit with that overhand, did you think it was going to be finished after that? The first, the, after the first no, knockdown? Yes. Well, yes, I, I realized that I can finish the fight, but I realized he was blocking my punching, my technique. So I didn't want to go to the ground with him because I watched a couple of videos from him and he has a good jiu-jitsu and I prefer to stand up and do my technique because I was confident more in stand up technique. Question for you. Yeah, Georgie, uh, question for you. Um, your first fight with Boba Jenkins ended uh, via choke, and second fight via knockout. I know now it's like you're a free agent now. Are you going to wait um, a while before you get in the cage? Or are you going to start testing that free agent market? Um, yeah, we're going to see, you know. But uh, I have some unfinished business here. Uh, hopefully we could come to a good agree agreement. But uh, yeah, now I want to I wanna kind of stay here. We'll see. And Scott, uh, are you going to like, you know, resign him or are you going to... I think, we're already I think we're already talking to him actually. So. I mean, listen, you know, he's, since I've been here, yeah. George has put on some great performances and win, lose, draw, whatever, he always brought it. And that's what I appreciate is that, you know, we know that when we put him in a, in a bout, it's, it's going to be on. And, and those are the five types of fighters that we like to keep. So, very good. And, and uh, another question for uh, Chinzo. Um, How'd you feel after your, your Bellator debut? I mean, and are you going to get in the cage uh, sooner rather than later? Sorry, the second part. Oh, are you, are you, are you going to get back in the cage uh, this year or maybe next year? Yeah, first of all, I feel very happy for sure because it's my first fight here in Bellator. So I'm so happy and especially because I, I had a good winning and a good victory. And what's the second question? Oh, that was it. That was yeah. It. Question right here. Georgie, can you talk about when you caught his kick, you know, he had his foot, there's options like a trip or maybe trying to grab a single and then of course you went with the, the, the heavy hands and got the takedown. Like how fast is your mind moving and do you train those situations and, and all the different options you have with that? Uh, you just got to let it happen, you know. Uh, I wasn't there to kill him, so he gave me the opportunity and I landed the hand, so you know, I'm either to kill them or get killed, so. Yeah. You had a uh, large contingent from the IE, I imagine. Could you hear that? Could you feel that? I mean, they were probably some of the more vocal crowds tonight. Uh, when I was fighting, no, because I was in the zone. But uh, after, yeah, after I could, I could see all the crowds. Question for Benson. What did you and Chandler say to each other afterwards uh, when you guys were posing? I didn't really hear what he said. I, I, to be honest, like, I, he mumbled something and I was like, yeah, or, like, <laughs> I'm not sure what he said, but I'm sure it wasn't anything like uh, you know too positive towards me. So I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and can you talk? Well, what did you say to him? Like, that, that was it. It looked like you uttered more than that. Nah, that was pretty much the gist of what I said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Overall, there's respect there, or, or like, uh, like, are you two athletes that like, get along, or have you guys ever had any friction? I I haven't had a problem with any. Those guys I'm going to face off against, or about to face off against, or guys I, I fought in the past. I'm pretty uh, laid back individual, so I haven't had a problem with anybody. I don't think I have a problem with Chandler at all. It's Josh. Um, Benson, first off, this club that you're in, this you know UFC club that's coming over to Bellator, is growing now. Rory is another one. What are your thoughts on on the expansion? Sort of you guys coming over, the, the guys that are choosing to do that, and. You talk to them, you know, the, the UFC fraternity, do you guys talk amongst yourselves about the experience here and what's it like? Yeah, I, I think for, for the most part, when it comes to talk about that, 
I've had quite a few guys hit me up and ask me about the Bellator and the signing and the workings of the deal. And I just give them my honest opinion. I don't try to sell anybody. I don't say, hey, well, hey, you should do this or you should do that. I give them, you know, my perspective, my point of view, uh, how these guys have treated me, like, the kind of deal that I have. And then I, you know, say, hey, you got to make your decision based on what's best for you and your family. You know? uh, but I, I give them, you know, my perspective, my point of view, how they treated me so far, all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, they make the decisions that they that they make. Rory's still pretty young at 27. Did you know him at all? I mean, have, have you? Oh, we, we fought on a couple of cards together. So, like most all the UFC guys, like are the you know the yeah. fighters. Like you hang out a little bit. You're on the same fight cards. So you're at the hotel for the whole week, all that sort of stuff. So I, we, we've talked uh, before in the past. He's on a couple of my cards. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Game. Are you expecting more of this? Do you think more guys will come up? I think absolutely. Yeah, Scott the. Bringing over fighters like Benson and Rory and, and other fighters, Phil Davis, who are you know still top of their game in terms of their mixed martial arts, and combining it with kids like AJ and Joey Davis and these, these prospects that you're signing. Can you talk about your philosophy now, sort of building the roster? You've been here a couple of years. I know you already you always lay the groundwork, and you talked about doing things now and doing things for the future. So how is that coming together? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're really ahead of the game. And when I when I came to Bellator, they had a, a good roster. We started sprinkling guys that were entertaining, like Paul Daly, Melvin Manoff. Uh, but I knew that we had to start building our own guys because you need to build them from the ground up as well as you know maintain the, the base that you have, but also free agency. And that's how we built the last company that I had, right? Was we we sprinkled some free agency, but you know we built Luke Rocco, we built Daniel Cormier, we built. You know, Tyron with we, these are guys we found from the scratch, right? And I think we're very good star identifiers, and then we know how to build stars in this business, and and that's what we're doing here. I mean, it's the same formula. You know, we're gonna build. I mean, I was telling I was telling AJ, I said, you know, this kid's so talented, and and I followed his dad's career as well because he was in MMA. And I said, I think you throw more kicks and punches in one fight than the dad did in the whole career, <laughs> right? <laughs> On his behalf, they never paid him to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still train with my dad every day. So he's pay him to fight, and he'll fight. Okay, he'll show so you guys something you've never seen. So maybe we, we should talk. I've never promoted him, but maybe we should talk to him. Maybe he can charge us for kick per round, or you know, <laughs> punch per round. But but honestly, we have some um, unbelievable talent. You guys know we signed some of the best wrestlers. We're going after some different different group of fighters, but. You know, we're 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 in the business of building the next stars, and, and I think we have such a great crop of new guys and new girls coming up. Some that you guys know, some that you don't know. Some will be announcing soon, and then uh, you know, and then you sprinkle some free agency, man, and then you have a great, robust roster, and that's that's where we're headed. Question of friendly choice. Staying with Scott, I noticed you. You know, you've been checking your phone, and did you happen to hear in the back, or maybe an update on uh, Pitbull? What? The actual injury is like—is is there a break or? We're a trying to get more information, but I'm, I don't—I don't think. Do we have anything yet? Fibula is a broken. Yeah, yeah, it's a broken. So he has a—he has a broken fibula. Is what I'm told. But we'll get—we'll get you guys all the details. I don't want to speculate, but you know, he's uh, probably on his way to the hospital right now. And uh, as soon as we get some more information, um, for, I'll get to. You. Okay, thank you. And for Derek, talk about that fight. I mean, the first round was very close. The second round, you took. Going into the third, do you think it might be 1-1? One, one? And overall, just what do you think of that scrap? It had a lot of tension. You guys were stalking each other before the fight, and, and you guys got down. There was almost some finishes, so all around a great fight. Uh, I thought it won every round. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he came to fight. He was tough as hell. Um, you know, I was ready for that. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, we were stalking each other in, in, in the beginning of the fight, but, you know, we're about to fight. So, you know, it's not personal or anything like that. We're professionals. Um, and uh, you know, I just wanted to put on. I wanted to put on a better performance. I had a couple mishaps in my camp, kind of took me back a little bit. Um, I could have been a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a display. I think, but I still think I put on a better display than Benson, who's going to get the title shot. And uh, I like that myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 David. Uh, question for Joey Davis, right here. Now you you fought. This is a huge card you were on. One of your 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 a local guy as well. Were you? Did you have some jitters going into that fight? Hell uh, yeah! I mean, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I had a lot of people here, and um, I just wanted to show Bellator what I can do. And I thought I could do a little better, but uh, should have threw more combinations. I thought I was just throwing one two punches, but uh, 
the guy was tough, man. He could take a beating, man. Those are, those are the ones I hate. And, and starting from where you're at right now, what do you have to do to work your way up to, to – does that play a factor in your mind, like all these guys are ahead of me, or is it just one step at a time for you? Yeah, one step at a time. I feel like my cousins ahead of me, a lot of people ahead of me, but – I'm a quick learner, man, and I and I love to win, and um, I'm a, I don't like losing. Period. You know, um, can tell by my wrestling record, but uh, I think I'll be there pretty soon. It's just gonna take a little time, and I thought I did okay today, but I, I could do a little better. Uh, question for Derek: I thought that was maybe fight of the night right there. You showed a great display of boxing. You you were bobbing and weaving. Do you have a boxing background? Uh, yeah, my boxing coach, Bernie Navarez, uh, Navarez Boxing in Vista, California. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody's gonna mess with me in the hands, so. Um, I'm ready to strike anybody. And then when it went to the ground, I think you had like a, a Kimura or that looked like it was close. Um, what were your thoughts when you guys were tumbling around? I think uh, it was the second round. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I'm not really known for my ground game, but I got it, and uh, I just like to punch people. Um, and uh, you know, for sure, I can tap people out. Trust me. Um, but uh, you know, we were we were we were rolling it out, and uh, I just felt. Um, like I had it on him, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, I just did my did my thing out there, you know. I, I, I think you're talking about the triangle to the uh, bottom. Right, right. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I should have went for it a little sooner. I think actually. Did you have any hesitation of thinking that the decision might go against you because there was a lot of fans for him? And, and the follow up, the last question is, what will it take for you to get a title shot? Are you calling Benson out a little bit? Is that what? Yeah, sure, whatever. You know what I mean? Like uh, we can fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I need to get, uh, I need to fight, so let's do it. Um, I'm ready to fight. Like I said, you know, I didn't even have the best camp right there, so I'm ready for uh, title shots. I'm ready for big fights. I'm ready for everything. Um, nobody's gonna beat me. Not a lightweight. Question goes. Questions for Joey and AJ. You guys are teammates, and oftentimes we hear that the anxiety isn't so much for when you're fighting, it's when your teammate fights. Can you talk about the process of being on the same card? Is that something you would want to do in the future, maybe in November? For me, there's no anxiety. I would love to do a father-son fight, be the first in history to do that. You know, nobody's done that. So, okay, I'll corner my dad, my dad will corner me. Like, let's do it. When I'm in that cage, I'm having fun. I enjoy coaching, I enjoy helping. You know, this, this is just what I do. I have fun with it. There's, there's no pressure at all for me, at all, any time. For me, it was, uh, this was always been my dream to fight my cousin one time, you know what I mean? And um, the whole day just been a blessing for me, so I'm just, I'm just happy right now, man. Lost words. I feel like I was, I feel like I was more nervous for his fight than mine, honestly. I was sitting on the cage, like, like just trying to coach. I, I, I it was unexplainable. Was he just, yells at me a lot, you know. And I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> I see little mistakes, but uh, for a month and a half of training for him to come in here and do that, I'm, I'm so proud of him, man. He's, he's gonna be right there, right behind me, you know. Um, I feel like we're, we're going to be the face of Bellator, you know. Anybody feels otherwise, step in that cage, sign the dotted line, and we'll prove you wrong. Marcos? Question that, Marcos. Question for Ben. Ben, what'd you make of how the fight was going up until the stoppage? I feel like I couldn't get started. I felt like he was sitting down on that, you know, fastball wing to let something loose. I was like, uh, he's in trying to hit me, he's in trying to hit me. But, uh, you know, I feel like I just couldn't get started. Second round started going. I uh, started getting my jab going a little bit better. Started started pushing the pace. So I was trying to go forward to engage, but he kept uh, doing a good job of being um, uh, elusive, dancing around, and uh, just couldn't quite get started the way I would have liked to. Do you attribute that to anything, or do you elaborate on that? Do you feel a little bit cold? Uh, I might have to take a little look back. You know, give me a couple of days to look back at the film and, and see what's what. Um, a as of right now, though, placing my finger on what it was that didn't allow me to get started, you got to take off hats off to, to Pitbull. Obviously, like he, he's a you know a great fighter, former champion. So it was nothing that exactly just me. There's another person in there too. So I'd say that he did a great job not allowing me to get started, which is what you want to do as as a fighter. You don't want to let your opponent get started. So I think he did a good job. Got to take hats off to him, and I got I got to fix whatever uh, holes that were. Do you feel you're winning the fight up until that point? Uh, I thought so. It, it, it was one of those toss-ups, you know, flip a coin, give it to this guy. Oh, yeah, sure. Flip a coin, give it to that guy. Oh, yeah, I guess, sure. Uh, that was definitely kind of close. Uh, and I know I needed to, to turn it up, turn it on, uh, going into the second and going to the third. Okay, question up here. Question for John. Uh, tomorrow you have the boxing event. 
And I'm sure you'll you'll know soon enough how uh, I guess they call them the overnight numbers, how the MMA does. But I'm just curious, what's the overlap between uh, combat sports fans that just love both and will tune into both nights versus like some will just tune in tomorrow and some will just tune in tonight? Well, I mean, part of doing this whole event was that we have two premier properties and we wanted to put them together. There's a lot of, I mean, not just to create a great weekend because there's a lot of efficiencies, but you know, we believe that. You know, combat sports fans love a good fight, and we're hoping to introduce fans who maybe haven't come to uh, a boxing match to come, you know, come, you know, be here tonight, hear about it, and come back tomorrow, and vice versa. We just we've done a bunch of pre-promotional um, events and got the word out that uh, you know we'd like to do, we'd like to see more crossover in those. But um, we will find out the numbers actually on Monday. We don't find out uh, until Monday. But we, you know, I think that. We've done a really good job and continue to do a good job of co-promoting. There's a lot of stories on both sides. We try to tell those stories. We have the best production team in the world. We try to tell those stories. And you saw, you saw, uh, if you saw the show, we're talking about tomorrow night. And tomorrow night we'll be, we'll be you know, wrapping up what happened here and continuing that storyline uh, that, that is, is unfolding before us. So bottom line is we're seeing, we're, we're putting the pieces together and it's turning out well. I mean, this weekend has been fantastic. I mean. Already, we're seeing so many. Uh, I mean, everyone's getting along. I mean, we have two promotions in the same building at the same time, and it's going great. I was, I'm, I'm really excited about what we saw tonight. The crowd is great, and tomorrow night should be great too. So, um, I think we're going to see some crossover. I think we're going to see some new fans from both sides, and I think we'll hopefully continue to continue this great uh, this great weekend. Just a couple more guys. And AJ, you told us this week on MMA Junkie Radio that you're interested in maybe boxing. So, will you be here tomorrow? And have you told your bosses, you know, that you're interested in and maybe getting in the squared circle? I'm interested in fighting anywhere, anytime, any place. You know, um, fighting is just what I love to do. Paycheck's a bonus, but at the end of the day, since I was a little kid, I always wanted a state championship ring and a belt. So uh, that belt's what I want. You know, hey, you got a boxing contract for me tomorrow? I'll go fight. <laughs> you want me to fight? I'll fight. You know, uh, it's it's all entertainment. You know, so you build a name and. People, it's supply, a supply demand thing, you know. You build a name and, and you can do whatever you want. So, question what else? Question for Ben. Um, since Rory McDonald's now in uh, Bellator, do you have any interest in moving back up to potentially fight with him, maybe in Canada or in the Dynamite event? Uh, I'm pretty much open to everything. You know, Scott signed me, Belder signed me, they brought me over here. Uh, four big fights. That's the reason why I always sign. Or fight, big fights at 185, big fights at 170. I'm game. You need to fight on two weeks' notice, one week notice? Sure, no problem. You need a five rounder on, on one week notice? Sure, no problem. I'm your guy. I can give it to you. So, uh, face off against the Rory or whoever at 170. Yeah, no worries. Any questions for John and Scott? Do you, um, do you guys feel like you mean since both Rory and kickboxing and MMA really? harms your brand because people don't really know what to focus on. It's just Spike TV Sports and MMA and then kickboxing and then boxing. Do you feel like it's content overload, especially all in one weekend? I'd like to just start, I mean, you know, I mean, I grew up a boxing fan. I, I love boxing and I'll be here tomorrow to watch the boxing fights. And, um, you know, if you look at all these guys up here, there's not one guy up here that doesn't have a boxing coach and working his boxing skills. MMA is boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, all combined, that's mixed martial arts. So everybody up here, I'm sure they're all boxing fans too and they love to watch a boxing fight. So it's part of modern day martial arts. You can't separate it and say, you know, well, are you a fan of this or a fan of that? You have to be a fan. If you're a martial artist, a mixed martial artist, you're a fan of everything. And you're using everything together. As a as a as a fighter, uh, an eclectic style, but boxing is a big part of that, and you, and I think you saw some of that tonight. And all these guys are talented. You know, these guys. I think that listen, if their focus was to go be a boxer, I think they could do it. And same thing with the boxers. If their focus was to be an MMA fighter, they could probably do it. And so I don't think that that's you know the way I look at it is is part of martial arts. It's not separate. And then when you say the brand, I mean, like Spike is the home of you know combat sports. You can watch kickboxing on Bellator, you can watch Bellator MMA, and you can watch boxing. I mean, so yeah, what a better way to spend the weekend. And that, that's how I feel. I mean, John? No, I, I, I totally agree. And I feel like it's not overload. I think it's not enough. I'd love to do this. I'd like to do this more often. 
It's been great. Yeah. One or two more guests over here. Scott, since you guys are going to San Jose, I'm curious, will you, uh, like, I'm thinking of Josh Thompson. Is he ready to go again? May, may he be featured on the card? And are, are there any other names that you can already share with us? Uh, we announced a fight earlier today with uh, MVP and Fernando Gonzalez. And then uh, the main event will be Chandler versus, uh, uh, sorry, Benson Henderson. That's going to be the main event. But we also have two other fights that we're going to announce, or three other fights, actually, we'll be announcing. Um, probably next week, but um, you know that's 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 going to be the big fight. Is the main event between Benson and Chandler? Can I fight? <laughs> <laughs> you can fight anytime you want. Let's do it. <laughs> Last question from David. Uh, question for Scott. Um, we've seen that it's, it's cliche. MMA is the fastest growing sport in the world right now. Mm -hmm. But what's really growing as well are personalities and talk. And is that something that you're looking to promote? Is that, we talked yesterday about you doing fun fights, fights for the fans, fights for the hardcore fans. Uh -huh. But if someone like an MVP, if you put them against someone if you, with an identical personality, there might be some water bottles being thrown around in the press conference room. Mm -hmm. Do you want something like that to happen? Is that because it draws more attention to the sport and personality? I know Benson's shaking his head. No, but in the end. The numbers don't lie. What's your take on all that? I mean, you know, we've done, you know, like I just told some people yesterday, the fun fights, the very first fun fight that I watched, and I think I told you this story, was Bob Sapp fighting Nogueira in Pride. And Josh probably knows which Pride it was. was it Dynamite. It was, Dynamite. It was a Dynamite show, right? <laughs> and uh, it was the very first, it was the very first Dynamite show, right? That, that big stadium show. Yeah, it was the stadium that had 80,000 people there. It was an amazing show, but Bob Sapp, who was a pro wrestler, football player, comes and fights Nogueira, who's a skilled jiu-jitsu fighter and it was one of the funnest fights I've ever seen and then I would ask you know Mr. Ishii years later you know why would you do that fight or why would you have Aki Bona fight who's at what 400, 500 pounds fighting Boyce Gracie at, at you know 175 pounds and he said to me he said something that really stuck with me all the years later and he said you know when uh, Ernesto Hoost who was a champion at the time fights Peter Arts the hardcore fight fans watch but when Aki Bono fights Boyce Gracie, the whole country watches, right? And we've and we've experienced the same thing. Some there's some athletes that cross over to, you know, just general the general public audience, right? And uh, and that casts a little bit bigger net than maybe just the hardcore fight fans fight that they want to see. So we've done both, and we're going to continue to do both. But I will say this: ninety percent of the fights that we've done have been for the hardcore fight fans, you know. And that's we're going to continue to do that. But once in a while, if you see something that's going to be fun to watch. We're not going to be afraid to do it. You just, sorry, uh, address the personalities. Would you be, if you saw bottles throwing around, is that something you'd be okay with and know that, okay, it's going to draw tickets, or is that something you never want to see in your promotion? I mean, here's the thing. At the end of the day, you know what, it's, that, that's, you know, I know what you're talking about, but, and I don't want to even address that because, you know, part of that is show for the, for the, the fight and build up of the fight. And so, you know, I think that's what you're seeing, you know, and, you know, is it something that's part of the fight game? I think it is part of the fight game, but for me, is it my style? Really, it's not, it hasn't been my style, you know, but to have a matchup that has intriguing, like to me, Hoyce fighting, when Hoyce fought Ken Shamrock, right? People are like, oh, some people didn't like, but you know what? We had 3.2 million people watching that fight. Those numbers are undeniable, right? Because it casts a little bit bigger net than what the hardcore fight fans want to see. So, you know, Spike TV is an entertainment property. We're going to continue to entertain. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to have a group photo. Okay. And uh, thanks for coming.